Hello and welcome to a special presentation from In The Money Media. It's our brand new Kentucky Derby top 10 list right on the heels of the Florida Derby and the Arkansas Derby. Major clues given out yesterday. We're going to start to unpack it all. PTF here with JK. Very excited to get to this new top 10. Uh, we're going to start off by rewarding our comment contest winners. You can go ahead and uh, see them there one after the other up on the screen. Very, very impressive getting the correct long shot for second in the Florida Derby. And then uh, in Arkansas, that was not a long shot that we had uh, any love for, but we've got a comment contest winner just to let, just the same. Really appreciate everybody chiming in when you leave a comment. Gives us a chance to interact with you and uh, a little bit of love for us as far as the YouTube algorithm goes. That's not a bad thing either. Let's do another one. Uh, we'll, we'll announce that at the end of this video. So make sure you stick around so we can recognize your work. With that, let's get on to the top 10. We've got some changes. Uh, one thing about yesterday, JK, is there were a couple of horses, and we'll deal with them in tandem here, the ninth and 10th runners on our top 10 list, who uh, they stay on the top 10 list. But for me, in the case of both Timberlake and Mystic Dan, it's almost like they stay on this top 10 list created by our colleague at uh, In The Money Media, Eric DeCoster, because somebody has to round out the top 10. For me, I'm left with more questions than answers when it comes to Timberlake and Mystic Dan. Mystic Dan, I think I'm, I'm willing to just say, okay, maybe that was slop aided last time. Maybe it was the way the track was playing. But I really want you to chime in on Timberlake because you've been as big a fan as anybody of this horse to this point. Well, I think these two horses are going to be on this list for another week. And then I think after what we see next weekend with the Wood Memorial, the Santa Anita Derby, and the Bluegrass, these two horses will likely get off. Mystic Dan was clearly bias aided in his previous win. I have no problems moving him off the list, but I understand why he's there for now. As far as Timberlake is concerned, to answer your question, Timberlake showed a bunch of talent. He did it in the champagne going around one turn. I think ultimately now it's going to likely be a one turn situation for Timberlake. He's going to be a good one. He's going to be a very good one. If I could get a future wager on him to win the Jerkins this summer, I would do it right now. I just don't think he wants to go that far because I actually think he had a pretty good trip last time and wasn't able to pull it out. So what you're saying, JK, is we might be saying bye-bye-bye to Timberlake on our Derby Top 10. I am not saying that. You are. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've avoided making Timberlake puns basically all spring So for and, and winter. So forgive me for that one. I just couldn't resist. Uh, let's move on to <laughs> eight and seven on our list. These are horses we've talked about before. They're sort of holding steady. We have much more perspective about them after what we saw yesterday. A domestic product coming in at number eight and Honor Marie at number seven. Honor Marie, a horse, uh, looks poised to continue to move forward. But boy, now that we've seen what we saw yesterday, going to have to move forward a whole lot. Certainly these two horses uh, deserving of their spots on the list and probably will hold them even through next week, I'm going to guess. Where are you at the moment with Honor, Marie, and Domestic Product? And they both feel like types that can round out your plays uh, on the first Saturday in May, but they don't feel like types that are going to get roses draped across their back, like you said, based on what we saw yesterday. Let's move on to a very exciting new participant in this Kentucky Derby Top 10. We've had people saying in comments ever since we started these Top 10 videos, where's Forever Young? You guys are sleeping on Forever Young. Forever Young, according to all speed figure sources, ran a pretty strong race in Saudi, came back yesterday over in Dubai and uh, ran a really visually impressive race. We don't have an official speed figure for this. Personally, though, JK, from the little bit of work I've done, I'd be surprised if this is not right around a 100, not a track that we have a lot of people making figures for. If you follow our coverage over on the podcast side, in the moneypodcast.com in the Money Players podcast, wherever you get your podcast, We will do some more digging to try to accurately assess the time Forever Young ran. But this looks like another serious contender for the Japanese when it comes to the Kentucky Derby. They've sent over, to my mind, what have been live horses. And uh, Forever Young might be another one for the Japanese contingent. Always great to have that international participation in the Kentucky Derby. Where are you with Forever Young? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that some of our Japanese friends can put in the comments some things I need to know about Forever Young. You know, when we don't have them over here to see them all the time, it's, sometimes it's hard to gather the information we're comfortable gathering for some of our other horses. So if you have any ideas, please put them in the comments about Forever Young. I will say this. I've always been a believer that someone 
from overseas could eventually win the Kentucky Derby if we didn't have a special horse. It feels like we might have a special horse. That's my only holdup with getting behind Forever Young. So I'm hoping that some people can share some things in the comments to let me know why this horse can win the Kentucky Derby, but he definitely deserves to be on the list. Great to see uh, in the money media team member Toshi Onokubo doing the translating after the race. That was a lot of fun. The only thing that gives me a little bit of pause about Forever Young is in that translated interview after the race, it seemed very clear they were concerned about kickback for this horse. And he had to be ridden unusually, let's say, to, to, to sort of avoid kickback in Dubai. That's going to be a lot harder on the first Saturday in May. But I'm with you. Drop in the comments. Let us know what you think about Forever Young. Going to take a minute to thank our sponsors for this video, Free Rain Coffee Company. Been such a pleasure working with them, not least because I now have a kitchen full of Free Rain Coffee. And on a day like today, when I woke up early, I'm still on UK time, so I was up about 4 a.m. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to uh, prep for this video and get all the cooking done for dinner tonight. But thanks to Free Rain, I was able to get up and get after it. Really enjoyed the homestead I had in my cup this morning. Check them out. Free Rain Coffee uh, is the name of the brand. Check out their website, and you can use the promo code MONEY20 for 20% off site-wide. They've got uh, subscription services as well. Whether you're looking for grounds or beans or pods, our friends over at Free Rain Coffee Company are going to be able to help you out. Let's get back to the list, JK. We continue on with a couple of runners, actually four runners really in a row now that we can almost put into one grouping because we've talked about them on recent videos, talking about number five, catching freedom, number four, being deterministic, number three, Dornick, and our previous number one, uh, who's now number two, Sierra Leone, all horses that uh, are going to be heading to Louisville and will surely be, uh, be be getting some money. We're going to see more from uh, we're going to see more from this group uh, before we have to make our final decisions. At least from some of the group. Very curious where you stand with this strong band of four who makes up numbers two through four on our Derby Top Ten. Yeah, catching freedom. We we know who he is based on what he did in Louisiana Derby. He'll definitely be a main contender uh, for the, for the Kentucky Derby if that race happens to fall apart. Needs to get a little bit faster based on what we saw yesterday. Deterministic, another one. I'm excited to see what he does next weekend. Uh, a horse that could take another step forward considering how long his break was prior to the Gotham. As far as Dornick is concerned, I'm going to say the same thing I've been saying about Dornick. I, I just he doesn't really get me going. Uh, we didn't learn anything about him last time in the Fountain of Youth. And based on what I saw yesterday, I don't really need Dornock moving forward. If he's going to be close to the pace like that, um, I don't see him running by uh, who's going to end up being our number one. And Sierra Leone, obviously, still very interesting. A horse that that uh, if it gets a little bit quick, if there's a little adversity for our new number one horse, I could see Sierra Leone definitely being the one that I want picking up the pieces in the lane there uh, under the Twin Spires. Keep it locked to our In The Money Media YouTube channel. We'll have preview videos later in the week for the Wood Memorial and the Bluegrass Stakes. Really, the Derby picture starts to take its fullest shape after next weekend. There's still more points races, but in terms of the major points preps, next weekend's going to be it. We're going to have it covered for you here. We're going to have it covered on the podcast side in the Money Players podcast if you want to listen to more extensive coverage. And if you want even more In The Money Plus is the thing you're going to want to check out. We're going to have special coverage for Keeneland every day. That launches come Friday. And then even just for one month right now, you'll get our full Derby package. Lots of extras in there. Content covering the Kentucky Derby and the undercard. Really from soup to nuts. A must for any serious horse player in the moneypodcast.com slash plus the place to go to check that out. Let's get to our new number one fierceness in the piece. I wrote about this race, JK. I said, will the real fierceness Please stand up, and we can see him here. Just absolutely imperious in victory. I love the tactics. I love taking no prisoners. Not like he had to go that fast early, but I just love the aggressiveness, and it felt like he just was his old self. He is who we thought he was, or is he, JK? No, look, I, I he showed us brilliance on debut. He showed us brilliance in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And he showed us brilliance yesterday. Uh, that's enough for me to trust that he's a brilliant horse. Um, I, I was always of the belief that that he was going to run well uh, in his comeback race, and he didn't, and that's fine. 
Um, like I said, that wasn't the goal with a two-year-old champion like that. When, when you're wearing the blue and orange of Mike Rapoli, you're trained by Todd Pletcher, and you're ridden by Johnny Velasquez, the goal was not the Holy Bull. The goal was the, the Kentucky Derby and, and by way of the Florida Derby. He ran extremely fast, like special fast, like Saratoga was going to be busy anyways for the Belmont type of fast. And if he can continue to trend in that direction, I do think that he has an, an opportunity to be a historical horse. Uh, maybe one of, of, of a group of 13 that might be 14. If he can continue to progress in that way, he ran that fast yesterday that the idea of a potential triple crown is an actual, is an actual reality. If he progresses the way that he does, if he does what he did last time, which is kind of do this off and on thing where he's runs well, runs bad, runs well, runs bad, then obviously that wouldn't be the case. But I, I think he's a special horse, and I, I don't. I think it was just circumstantial that he didn't run well in his comeback race, and I think that uh, the rest of them are going to have to get a lot faster if they want to beat that horse. Four to one and nine to two around internationally for the Derby. That might be value. I'm going to hold the Black Eyed Susans and the Carnations because a horse that does have these sort of in and out kind of pattern. I'm, I'm not willing to quite. Go as whole hog as you. But as far as the first Saturday in May, JK, we are on the same page. This horse is so fast. I think it's, you know, it's a very facile analysis to say good race, bad race, good race, bad race, good race. Okay, what's next? Is it supposed to be bad race? It's not really how it works, in my opinion. It's a very small sample size. He's clearly back uh, going on the right foot. I understand some aren't going to want to trust him, but for me, that might mean we actually get him as a backable favorite because if you just look at the raw number, we're estimating a 107 buyer speed figure from this Florida Derby performance. He's miles clear to the point where he could almost be in – he could be. Uh, I, I have a feeling at the end of the day, a, a, an even money type ch chance, potentially. I don't think he will be because of all these attended questions, but maybe that could just be value in our pocket. Very, very excited to see what fierceness does next in the Kentucky Derby. We are going to be back to talk to you much more about the Derby. Videos coming this week. Another recap coming next week. Want to remind folks about the, the comment contest are you with fierceness or against and give us your one sentence case why we will feature that in an upcoming video really appreciate all the interaction with everybody uh, really want to thank our friends at uh, free rain coffee again for sponsoring these videos we encourage you wholeheartedly to check out their stuff for jk i'm ptf may you win all your photos <laughs>